All right, folks. Hope we're all doing well and everything is going great. And I wanted to um, go ahead and get you started on this. Give everybody a minute to get rolling. Do you all see um, Young Engineers of Today Arduino's inputs? Raise your hand if you can see this. All right. All right, we're going to wait for folks. Let me go one other thing down here. I will do this. Download as a PDF document. I'm going to choose a file here. Interesting. Playing game. Let me pull this over here. Let me get you all set to go here. We'll wait for some more folks coming in right now. Again, we record these just to give you an idea. Go ahead and pull this over here for myself. Okay. If you look under handouts, you now have lesson four ready to roll for you. So lesson four is there if you want to download these handouts, if you want to give them to your teachers, if you want to use them. In any way you'd like to learn more about Arduinos, please, that's what I made them for. They're not going to teach anybody if nobody uses them. So please go ahead and feel free to use them and share them. You know, if you use them, just give us credit, okay? But feel free to use them. It's based on other people that... Done work from SparkFun to the people at Arduino and that whole nine crowd. All right. I just want to make sure that you're seeing the right screen. I'm running two screens. You see young engineers of today, Arduino's input. Raise your hand again if that's in case what you see. Great. Also, go ahead, Science Olympiad. Well, this is lesson uh, four, inputs. Go ahead, come down on that. And let me go ahead and start this. If you've got an Arduino kit at home, awesome. If you got 123, digital 123, let's use that as well. Okay. And I want to make sure this is all recording, which I believe it is. It's kind of strange to me. Good. It's being recorded, so we're good there. Let's make sure we get questions. How do I find out recordings of past sessions? Go on Young Engineers of Today. There's a link on the Science House, and I'll gladly provide you a one at the end of class where if you join it, and if you join the um, join the link and get the updates, I'm trying to think of what I'm the uh, playlist. Join the playlist, then you'll get them every, every week when they come out. Okay? So does that help your question, Jared? And let me just see, we got 10 attendees, great. All right, good. All right, so we're gonna keep hitting this now so we get closer. We've been doing really just outputs with LED. It was a real focus on programming. This is a little more hardware, a little bit of more programming in. Uh, mechatronics really combines electronics, programming, and, uh, and if we were in mechanical engineering when you're making robots and whatnot. So anyways, we're gonna talk about analog read, Serial print, digital read. So analog read, digital read. Remember we had an analog write and digital write. This is the corresponding read. So this is when we're doing inputs or we're doing sensors. All right, so analog read. Photo cell, also known as LDRs, light-dependent resistance. The resistance decreases as the light source increases. All right, so you're going to go ahead and wire this. Take a moment. And if you've got, I'm putting everybody's hands down here. Let's do this. Let me know if you have a kit. Please raise your hand if you have a kit. You really, at least, 
at school, get your teacher to let you use the kit to get ready for the Science Olympiad event. Good. You all have kits. Go ahead. We're going to be hooking these up in a second. Here is. We're going to come to this light now. This is least important in the beginning. Notice this is a 330 ohm resistor. That's going into the ground. So that's going to the negative or short of the short leg of this resistor. The long leg goes the positive back to pin 9. That's the last thing you need to do with this picture. Um, if you can do this other things, find an LDR, find a 10K resistor, see that black line, and then run a wire from here to the one leg of the resistor. Run the other leg. It doesn't matter on a resistor direction. It's not polar. There's no polarity. Notice this 10K resistor is here, and then we run it back to the ground. Okay? It's known as a step down resistor, it's a grounded resistor, and it's 10K. We're going to talk about the use of this down the road here. This other leg of this is in between. Here's a photoresistor, here's this, and then here's this pin that goes all the way back to your analog. So you have the 5 volt going this way all the way up. You also have a ground. I'm going to put everybody's hands down here. Raise your hand once you have this set up. If you don't have the electronics or don't have 1, 2, 3D circuit, raise your hand now. So that way we're not waiting on for somebody. But for everybody else that's got the equipment wants to set it up, go ahead. I think you get a lot more out of this. Now, hopefully you can set it up kind of quickly here and just get rolling. Find the 10K resistor. And I guarantee you, we are not going to memorize what resistor is what. They have like colors, so you can look on those kits. I also just use, I've always have a voltmeter by hand and pull them out that way. We have them labeled. And... So raise your hands. You almost got them there. We got, wow. Let's get these other people set up. It'll take a minute. If you don't have the kit, go to 123D circuit. Give you a few more minutes here. Remember, if you have one, two, three D circuit, you can do what we're about to do.
And even if you don't have the LDR, you could really, we could do it a different way for you, but we could definitely do it. Give it about four more minutes here, folks. Try to get this out as best you can. Here's the LDR. Remember, power and ground going to your one gate. Don't worry. If you don't get the LD on there right off the bat, that's fine at this point. You know, if you don't get this part done, get this part done first. All right, hopefully you got most everybody set to go now so we can get started, all right? Okay, so here it is. We got a, this is gonna be called a pull down resistor. It's a 10K resistor hooked up to a ground. If there's a 10K resistor hooked up to a hot line, that power line, you know, five volt in this case, it would be a pull up resistor. So let's go through here. All right, so you have everything hooked up. So here's the first thing I want you to type in a bit, do a new program. All you people that have the other code go for this. Void setup, remember we have that in every void setup, void loop in every program. Pin mode, A0, comma, input, semicolon, void loop. Integer, LDR equals analog read, parentheses, A0, parentheses, semicolon. All right, go ahead and type that code in and run it. It should compile. Go ahead and run it. Go. Okay. How many people have run the code now? And again, if you don't have the equipment so you can't run the code, go ahead. But I one two three one two three D circuit would have it. What you would find if you run that code by now 
is it'll compile, it'll upload, and it won't do anything. It's not going to do anything. Because we haven't told it. All we've said is, hey, pin mode A0, and we could have had that as input up here as a variable and done it that way, but we're just A0. That's analog zero on your Arduino. So that's right here is A0, right? We're saying, hey, make that an input. A0, we're going to make it an input. Under void loop, take this variable we're defining right there, LDR, analog read, whatever A0 is, and assign it to LDR. Assuming that you typed in everything correctly, your code is working, yet that seems to be happening. We don't know what the Arduino is doing with the data it's receiving from the LDR or that photoresistor. So that photoresistor you made is being, when it reads A0, it's basically assigning that variable LDR, which is a photoresistor. Now, serial print allows the user to view the data the Arduino is processing. It's an incredibly useful tool. Like brain surgery allows you to see inside the Arduino. And it's really helpful troubleshooting. We have two we use, serial print. It'll print out the variable you give it if you put it in there, but it goes across the screen horizontally. It can be a little bit hard to read. That's why we use print LN. Stands for line. It's like a line break, a return, um, and it makes it ver vertical. Say it's a return on carriage return, like on a typewriter, but many of you never even used a typewriter. All right, so here's how we set this up. And I want you all to try to do this. Do serial.begin9600. That's the serial bond for transmission right. And then serial print line LDR. So if we get the LDR value up to analog read, which reads an LDR, because remember, A sub 0 is an input. It reads it. It's analog. reads it as LDR. Then it says print, serial print LDR. Puts everybody's hands down. Give you a few minutes to run this. All right, you've typed that code in there. Now the question is, well, how do I get to see it? Well, once you go to, after you upload, uh, compile it, upload, then press that little hourglass sign, and you should see numbers start rolling down your screen really fast. Let me show you what it looks like. Uh, we'll get to there. Something like this, only it'll be one set of numbers, right? And it won't be LDR there. But you should see, some kind of serial monitor with the numbers spinning around and around. Okay. Raise your hand if you got it to do that. Good job, Daniel. Good job, Sarah. All right, a bunch of you. 
Well, okay. But this is crucial. You want those serial numbers, and that's what you're going to read. So, all right. Now, something else you can do is those numbers, they're running by really fast. So how can we make them slower? Hey, how about adding a delay right after print line? Go ahead then. You'll see it slows things way down. Okay, let's go on then. We'll go a little bit faster here. So, remember, it's always going to go a little bit slower. Now, we can make it a little more readable if you add this little bit of code. And again, I'm just doing things where I'm adding one line of code. If we add this, serial print parentheses, quote, LDR equals space, quote again, parentheses, it'll then, when you print, you're going to see LDR equals, and then whatever that value is. Notice there's print. The next line's print line. And we want to do that. Think about it. You want LDR to be there, and then you want the number. Then you want it to go down a line. Remember, every time your code sees print line, it's like hitting an enter on your keyboard. This also slows you down. So if you're ever measuring something, that can throw you off. So, again, one of these deals, we're going to add a button here in a minute, but I'm going to lower everybody's hands. Raise your hand when you've got it. Go ahead and ask me some questions now if you've got any questions. <coughs> What is 9600 for? That is baud rate. That's the rate at the serial communications. That's why you want to make sure it's set at 9600. That's a communication. Okay. All right, <coughs> pardon me. <coughs> just went through this. Now let's go through it, you know, and again, we're just simply saying, you, you know, whenever you use serial print, it takes a little bit of time, so it can hurt your sampling. So if you're ever down on pre, you go off to college, and if you're gonna be an engineer, they're almost certainly you're gonna be messing with an Arduino. I think if you're a programmer, they're going to have you do some embedded coding. You're going to be using Arduino. If you're doing a lot of measuring something, say you're doing something with audio, you got to be careful with serial print. It does slow things down a touch. Now, if I can, I want you to go ahead and do another digital. We're going to add a button here. This was already here, right? This probably is here. Pardon me. I want you to go. We're going to make another. 10K pull down resistor. In this case, you're going hot to this pin right here. Then we have a resistor going here and it's 10K going to there. 
again to the ground, just like this one goes to the ground, this one. But on the other side of the button is another sensor. This was nine, controlling that light. This one is going to eight. Sorry, I'm getting uh, also a little bit of a lab ready for tomorrow. I am a full-time teacher. I'm sitting right here at my computer screen with you all. So please ask me a question. I'm glad to have, help you with this. And if you're in Raleigh, I'll be up giving this test in Raleigh. And our challenge test is a little bit strong. I challenge in just a few weeks. Raise your hand once you've got your button pushed in and this put in. Was the yellow circle? Uh, that's an LED right down there. That's an LED. Great, great question. Give everybody a few more minutes to put that in. Why does the button need a resistor? We're going to get to that in just a little bit. I'll explain exactly why that button needs a resistor. Okay, let me know if you've gotten that. Raise your hand if you've gotten those. Good. All right, you got your button in there and everything? Great. All right, so let's talk about Great question. Uh, someone brought up, said, hey, why do we have resistors and everything else? What's the difference between analog and digital? And what kind of data digital become from pin? Remember, digital's on and off. Analog is a range. Think temperature. Digital's on and off. Um, it's either light is on or the light is off kind of thing. And pin coming from pin 8 is going to be a digital, right? It's a button. It's going to be digital. So let's talk a little bit about why those resistors are there. There's different states off that Arduino, if you think about it. If it's on, B positive, so 3.3 or 5 volts, we say its pin is going to get you 3 to 5 volts, 3 or 5 volts. If it's off or the ground, it's 0 volts. Remember, we go from higher to lower, and there, there you go. You've got to have the ground. 
folks. But sometimes, if you look at your Arduino, what about all these pins right here? All these digital pins, nothing's hooked up to them. Hmm. Hmm. See, this is a ground. This is 5 volts. So if I go back and I'm hooked in there, I'm good to go. But what about when I'm not? Let me run back here. It went the wrong way, of course. My controller pins generally can have high impedance. Think as an internal resistor. Meaning it takes very little current to change the state, which is really good for reading sensors. We don't want to have to use a current. We like having 5 volts and 3.3 volts. The bad is because of floating. That is, it doesn't take much electricity in the air, much static electricity, anything to um, change the value of those pins. So what we do, and really what I want you to get out of this, really, is it's going to be a little bit opposite of what you think. Okay. All right. What happens with a pull-up resistor? That's it's connected to five volts in this case. You have your ground here, and you have a switch, and there's our volt logic gate out. And what I really want you to get on this, in a pull-up resistor, the switch is open, not pressed. AO AO zero will read five volts. So if it's not pressed, it's going to read it. Switch is closed, A0 will receive 0 volts because the volts doesn't, doesn't have to go through there. It doesn't have to. The pull-up resistor prevents a short when the button is pressed. So really what I want you to get out of this right now, this is the important thing. When the switch is open, in other words, it's not pressed, you're going to see a volt. You will see power. When the switch is closed, pressed, you're going to see zero voltage because it now has a ground to go through. Okay? So if it's got a choice to go through this ground or this logic gate, it's going to go through the ground. Does that make sense? So when it's closed, it's going to go. That's the least resistance. However, if it's not closed, it can go through that logic gate, your pin, and it's good to go. Also, by having this ground press, it prevents you from shorting things out. So it's got a place to go when that switch goes. Now, whereas in a pull-down resistor, we got our pin again from our logic rate. In this case, the ground has got the resistor. In the previous one, we said the pull-up resistor was to the hot, that VN. Now it's connected to the ground. And what that does is when... You uh, pull down resistor is 10 gay, logic gate is A0. When you press your button on a 10K resistor, the value becomes 1. So on a pull up resistor, when the switch is open or when the switch is closed, the value is 0. On a pull down resistor, the value is 1. So that's the important thing. So back here, we're basically using this with this button right here, we're using a pull down resistor. So when you press that button, we should get a value of 1. So here's a bit of code to get you going on this. You can use your code. Go ahead and save what you had as analog input. Now do this as serial. So save your old program and then make these changes so it's now digital. Everybody put their hands, I'm putting everybody's hands down. Let me know once you've done that.
All right. Now, hopefully you got that code in there. So let's go on the next part. So you put that as an input, pin 8. You did serial print LDR, which is this, and then you do serial print button. So this way you can see what the button is. This is going to print your analog value. This is going to print your digital value. Let's see if we have any questions on that. Okay. So hopefully you're going to, when you run the program, you're going to get LDR right there and buttons. And when you press the button, it should go to one. Let me know if you've gotten that done. I'm purposely going kind of slow here at times so people can actually do it while we're working on it. I'll stay on a little longer if we need to to get through this lesson. But let's try to get that. Raise your hand if you got it to work. All right, cool. That away, folks. All right, let me see if we have any questions here. We've got some more people say they got theirs working. Good. Let's go. If you've got questions not working, go ahead and ask me if you're getting a, any kind of error. Uh, as you add, just as a thought, as you're working on things, if you look at your breadboard, it starts to get cluttered if you're just using any which wire. So think of yellow for input, red for power, black for ground. Sometimes you use orange for output. So this could be another way just that you immediately go, oh, I see what this is all doing. These are all my inputs are in yellow, and my orange is a ground. No, I, you've got a lot of different colors, so you might go with a different color there. Okay, this yellow line is going to that analog, and this yellow line is going to this digital pin 8. But now let's start turning on this LED based on those inputs. And that's what makes mechatronics and all this so amazing. Up till now, oh, the switch is on. You have to sit there and run the switch. That's no good. We want to be able to control it. Only we want to control it across the internet. So, okay, to make this fit, we're going to go ahead and define this variable. Integer LED 9, pin mode LED output. Now, you could have made this 9 and just called it output, but we, I'm reminding you there's multiple ways to do this. So pin mode 8, you had A0 you had, pin mode 8, here's LED. Make sure you have that. Raise your hand once you do so I can go on the next slide of this.
All right, now. Let's go to the next one. So then, we're going to have a little different code in here. We're going to use an if-then statement. So if you've had programming, you've somewhere along the line seen if-else statements. If LDR is less than 200, so you've got, this is all, here's your void loop. It's what we've had every time. But this says if LDR is 200, write LED high. Else, digital write LED low. And then everything else is the same. Now, what do you think is happening here? Think about it. LDR is giving you values, and you're going to have to play with the values. You know, put your finger over the LDR, see what kind of value you're getting, make it pure light in your room, see what the value is, and decide. If it's below a certain value, you're going to turn the LED on. Otherwise, the LED is going to go off. We first put the delay in. I didn't put it, did not work with 250, but it did with 100 delay. Thank you, Sarah. So she had a little bit the bigger delay so she could read the values. Okay, raise your hand if you're getting this to work, folks. All right, a couple people have gotten it to work. We have the PDF for you to see it. Now, let me show you the next thing. And again, the PDF's there so you can practice. If you don't get it to work, go ahead, do that. Shoot me a question, whatever else. All right, now, in Java or C, which is based on in sketches, this is the same thing as and, this is or. And that's by the shift backlash key, if you're wondering where the heck that is. Um, it's right above the return key on the Mac keyboard. All right. And this is pretty universal. You'll see this in a lot of programming languages. So for those people who've had a little bit of scratch background, this is saying, hey, if score is less than 200, do something else, do that. If this is true and this is true do this or or do this so in this case it's if ldr is less than 200 make it high otherwise make it low if ldr is less than 200 and you push the button one oh turn it on high otherwise low in the other case if ldr is less than 200 or button one is pressed turn it on ors tend to make it more specific fewer uh, ands excuse me ands do that let me restate that again. Ands require both, both things you're testing to be true, where an or requires either one. So see how this is a 
this is the same thing as saying or, this is the same thing as saying and. Um, let me think about it this way. I must be, say I'm trying to get groups of students. I want a group of students of North Carolinas and six-year-olds. If you say you must be a North Carolina student and 16 years old, you're going to have one size group. But if you say you must be a North Carolina student or be 16 years old, you're going to get much bigger groups. And this, you kind of, you all Google, I hope you're starting to use a little more sophisticated searches. It does that for us. Okay. Try switching between and or or, and you'll see that. You'll get, you're going to get the light to come on for different reasons. That's what I have for today. And we've got a little bit of time, so I can stay on to help those people. I know you've got a lot of classes. We're scheduled to do one more lab Wednesday, but I'm going to go ahead and have some things next Monday and Wednesday, maybe a little bit later time. But we will have it there to answer questions or help you out. Okay? And this is a good time to talk while we're all here before you hang up. On the contest, the day of the contest, you're going to go from 10 stations. I'm going to have problems. You're going to have to figure out what's wrong with them. It could be either software or hardware. Then the last 20 minutes, you're, we're doing tiebreakers. Basically, I score your scores. If I've got a tie, then we see how many things you can build on the fly. Of all these little projects, try to build them. You can't build them all. But you can try to build them, get them going, and this breaks the tie. Oh, someone wants to know how to get the videos from the past. Yeah, let me just go ahead, blank my screen for a second. I'll go get them for you. I'll leave them right here. So everybody just hang on. Don't log on so I can get you signed up on the pay list. Hang on one moment. I'm going to go over here. All right, now, here it is, Young Engineers of Today. We've already even posted some already now. So there's Amazing Mechatronics a little while ago, less than, I don't know, four, I think. So this is fifth right now. So I'll go ahead and upload this. If you want to, you can go ahead. So look for this. Look for this little kind of Young Engineers through an eyeglass kind of folder on that. Let me go to my playlist here. Hang on. Playlist. 
and let's see amazing mechatronics i'm gonna go ahead and share that i believe share here we go there you go i'm gonna send it all to you in the chat Just go ahead and join the playlist if you go to that chat you should be all set signed out on this so i'm going to jump back out here okay everybody should have gotten the chat Bear with me give me one second to get back in there's a little bit of a pain to do that but we'll get it signed All right, so it shows it. Let's go back to here. All right. Okay, how many people do we have here? Anybody else have any more questions? Okay, thanks. Can you give the directions how to get that? I did that. So the first part's worth more than the second part. Yes, the first part's the one you gotta get. How long is each station in the competition? I believe it ended up being about minute 40 seconds on that. Okay, I'll explain the button circuit again. Yes, I can, Daniel. All right, let's go back here. All right, again, we have on and off states. That's what we want. We don't want it floating. Either we want three volts or we want zero volts. We don't want it two and a half volts. Uh, now, this random disconnect, by the way, is how you see random numbers with this thing, because it's, it's all over the place. So you have positive ground and floating. We don't want floating. All right, now, let's think about this. Think of there's a ground here, or this could be a ground here, okay? Here or here. This will have higher resistance as a ground than this ground does. So if I, if I don't press the switch, this is going to get a value of 1. Okay, the minute I press that switch, it's not going to go there anymore. So this is VN. So so it's going to this pen K resistor. It's going out this way. Then when I connect the switch, it can go to the ground. It doesn't have to go in there anymore. Okay. Now, on a pull down resistor. So when it switches closed, AL was received zero because it grounds out just perfectly well. When it's open, it's going to get five volts, the whole full max of it. And it also prevents a short, so it just go right in and right out. Now, here we are with a pull-down resistor, not a pull-up resistor. Here's our switch again. Here's the ground. Here's our V-out or buffer. When I have that switch, all right, when it's switched on, I get five volts to the pin. Okay, because it's not going to go through the ground. It's going to go through here. So when it's when it's open, your switch is zero. When it's closed, if you press the button on the switch, you're going to get one volt. So switch is closed. 
will read five volts. Switch is opened, AO will read zero volts. The pull-up resistor prevents floating as well as a short circuit uh, and a pull-down resistor, I should say. This should be pull-down. All right, pull-down. Let me go ahead and fix that right now. Shoot. You know, the pull-down resistor, again, is mainly... Let me go back to my last slide here. So we have that ground. Yeah. Okay. Pull down resistor prevents floating as well as another short again. All right. Otherwise, think about um, when this when this switch isn't connected. Right. There's nowhere for this current to keep running around. By putting that switch in there, we have a ground. We have a ground for this to go. I don't know if that helps. All right, so let's look, actually, we can look on the, think about it this way. Let me see if I can bring Daniel, if this will help. Because we always don't get the best explanations. Let's get the button one. There it is. All right, let's look at this. Maybe this will help. You see a lot of pull downs generally. All right, now see, look at this. What's going to happen? Here's current. It goes to this button. Now, if nothing else is happening, it can go up here, it can go out this ground, and you complete a circle going around and around and around. When I press this button, it has a choice. It could either go here or it can go here, right? If it goes here, then we're not going to get a full, we're not going to get the full voltage in the eight, are we? So we want this to be a 10K resistor. So we know this is higher resistance than this pin is here. So when I press that button and that current goes up to here and jumps across, it's going to go right to there. Hope that makes a little more sense. That help, Daniel? Is there going to be syntax here as part of the problems? Absolutely. Yes, there are. And that's a lot of them, honestly, syntax errors, and then some logic errors. And then there's going to be wires that are misplaced, or something's disconnected wrong, or you're reading a value, and you think it should be, when you press the button, the value should be 1, when the value should be 0, those kinds of things. All right. Any other questions? It's now past 8 o'clock. Not that it matters for me, but just for you all to know. Okay. If there's no other questions, I'm going to stop this. I'm going to upload the video so you can see it. We should be all set. All right. All right, so I'm going to end the webinar. Everybody have a great night, okay? Goodbye, all. Goodbye. Any other questions? Sarah, take care, everybody. Take care. Daniel, take care.